Finally got my hands on a 2012 15-inch MacBook Pro. Let's go ahead and get this thing upgraded. Hey everybody, it's Chris and Family Geekery. And a couple weeks ago we went through this laptop here, which was a 13-inch 2012, and we made a couple videos upgrading it and went through a journey of trying to get a dual boot windows and and uh, mac os going in it we took the cd drive out we put the cd drive back in it was quite the journey so if you want to see anything else about this one i'll leave links in the description below on what we did to this one but the reason why i've even got this one out here is because now i've found a 15 inch and what i really want to do is turn this 13 inch into the 15 inch so we're going to do some upgrades on the 15 inch as far as adding some memory so we're going to get it up to 16 gigs and i'm actually going to take the hard drive right out of this one and pop it into this one since it's already ready and and we're going to make this one i guess what i really had intended to turn this one into so let's go over a couple specs on what we're starting with and what we plan to do all right so like i said this is a 2012 mid 2012 15 inch and in this, it's got the i7, uh, which is a quad-core 8 process, I believe, i7. So the 13-inch that I had, that's been running really great. It's only got the i5, which I think is a dual-core i5. So I figured between the, the Mac OS, the newer versions of Mac OS, and the uh, Windows partition that I've got on there, it's going to take advantage of that i7 a little bit better. So what I've done is I've taken the hard drive out of that 2012 13 inch that we did and this is a two terabyte ssd that has a one terabyte uh, partition with windows and a one terabyte partition with mac os so i took that right out of the 13 inch you see i didn't even take the studs off because i'm going to just put it in here and take that other drive right out so that's going to be one part of the upgrade the other is simply going to be taking the four gigs of ram yes this is four gigs in this i7 and replacing that with 16 gigs of DDR3, 1600 megahertz. And that'll obviously help it out a lot. So that's the plan with this. Overall, this one, it's starting off with that i7. Like I said, it had a 500 gig spinning hard drive in it. So that's why we need to get rid of that. The physical condition was pretty good. There is one little ding right here. Um, you know, this, uh, this aluminum, it's soft. If it takes a bump, it's going to show the bump. So it's got a little ding, but I'm not too concerned. It didn't damage the screen at all. It doesn't look like it's going to have anything to do with the inside either. So once we open up, we'll see that. So let's go ahead and pop this thing open, and uh, and let's see what's inside. All right, so I flipped the computer over, and I took out the 10 tiny little screws. You can see I've got them on my little magnetic keeper here. Remember on this model, if you've got the hinge back here, these back three right uh, screws are going to be the longer ones, all the rest are the short ones. And I used my uh, double zero Phillips to get those off. Make sure that you do use the right drive because you can strip these things out and you don't want to have to buy new ones. Take care of them. Um, I use my trusty Strabido kit that I show in all my videos. I, I buy these myself, less than 30 bucks on Amazon. You can get them for like 22 bucks when they're on sale. Worth every single penny. So once I got all 10 uh, screws out, I'm going to lay those to the side here, and I just grab it back by the hinge and just lift up and away, and there we go. That There's the internals. So the first thing we like to do is disconnect this battery connector right here. So I've got a spudger also came in the kit, and I'm just going to take that and gently pry this connector up and once it's free I just bend it back a little bit and now this battery which we're not going to replace in this uh, in this video it's still still running strong um, I'm just going to keep that disconnected just while I work on the rest of the internals if you did want to disconnect this then it takes um, a couple screws here pop it out pop in the new one it's not that bad I've got several other videos uh, on my channel that show replacing a battery, so just look for one of those and it'll show you how. Um, it, it might use 
a different bit. Yes, in case in this case it does use the tri-wing bit, which is also in this kit here. And that's definitely if you're going to be replacing the battery, you want to get that right kit because it's a pain in the butt if you don't have the the, the right kit, the right tip for that. So we got it open. We're going to, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take out the old RAM. So let's get started with that. All right, so to replace this RAM here, all we're going to do is take out the old RAM first. You got two little plastic ears, one on either side. We're going to spread those apart with thumbs. And when you spread that apart, you'll see it springs up a little bit. And that top one pops right out. And then the bottom one, you're just going to do the same thing again. You're going to spring it up. And sometimes your thumbs get in the way, so you spring it again. And that second one pops right out. Now as I'm taking this out, take note that there is an offset to the notch. The notch is on the right hand side. So when we grab our new RAM, we know we need to orient it the same way. So this is uh, going to be 8 gigs per chip. So two chips is going to give us 16 gigs in this machine. So what we're going to do is the same thing in reverse. We're going to line up the RAM to the bottom slot. And you can see how I'm going in at a little bit of an angle. So sliding it down in at an angle. I give it a little push with both thumbs pushing that way just to make sure it's fully seated. And then I keep a little bit of pressure that way as I push it down past these clips. And once that bottom one is all the way down, I do like to take a look at right along the contacts, the little gold contacts there, just to see if it looks like that it's been properly seated, you know, left to right, that you don't have more pushed in this way than that way. That's just going to save us a step if we boot it up and it's not recognizing one of the RAM chips. So we grab the second one, line up the notch, do the same thing this time in the top slot, put it in at a slight angle, kind of wiggle it, get it seated fully in there, and then pop it down past those ears. And that's it. Take a look at the contacts again, and the RAM is done. All right, now as far as the hard drive goes, we're gonna start off by taking this bracket that holds the hard drive in off. So we've got two Phillips. We can use the same Phillips double zero tip for that. And what I usually do on these is I just unscrew them and back them up but don't take them all the way out. That way they stay in that little bracket. And I can just slip the bracket up by itself and it keeps the two screws in there and just lay that to the side. We've got this plastic tab here from, from the manufacturer that helps us lift this up, but don't lift it up too far because we've got a ribbon cable right here, which isn't gonna go very far and it's very fragile. So we're just gonna lift up a little bit to get the hard drive up out of its little mounting sockets here and then slightly wiggle the SATA connector off. You can see how short that is. You wouldn't want to pull this up and out of here. So with this taken out, really my job is, is going to be pretty easy because like I said, I left those studs on there from the other one. Now if you had to move the studs from the old drive to a new drive, then you would need a T6 drive and this T6 is also in this Strabido kit that I've got so I've already got these on so I'm gonna save a step so with that already done next thing we have to do is gently put this SATA cable back in and then we're gonna line up these studs into these little rubber bumpers here and then lay it down and now it's ready to put this guy right back down on top of so I did save a step there but if you have to do that step to move those studs over it only takes a second to move those four studs over as long as you got that right bit And the last thing you can do if you want is you can move this little plastic tab over here. Usually there's enough sticky left on it. I'm not going to worry about it right now. So in that case, we are done with the hard drive. All right, so now that we've changed out the RAM and the hard drive, 
we're going to put this battery connector back in. So you just line it up and push it straight down with your thumb. Make sure it's fully seated. And now we're ready to put the lid back on. And if you've watched my videos before, you know that I like to keep all the screws off until I've got the thing fully tested. So I'm just going to put the lid on but not screw it down. That way in case I have to go back in and, and fix something, I don't have to take all the screws back out. So I just hold it together with my thumbs, flip it over, and we are good to go. So now I'm going to boot the thing up and see if it, if it works. All right, so this drive that I just put in here, I, like I said before, I've set it up for dual boot, but we're just going to test the Mac OS for now. So we'll just hit the power button. And there we go. We're hoping to see it boot right up into Mac OS. And it took a tiny bit longer than it normally does, but I'm guessing that's just because it recognized, hey, this is a, a little different computer. Most of the internals are going to be the same, but there's going to be some slight differences. So let's go ahead and log in and see what we got. So here we are in Mac OS. Let's check out about this Mac. And it sees the 2.3 gigahertz quad core Intel i7. It sees the 16 gigs of RAM, so that's good. The startup drive worked just fine. So this one is the 15.4 inch. So it's going to be giving me a little bit more screen real estate, a little bit more resolution than that 13 inch will. And it sees both the partitions of the hard drive. Here's the Mac partition and then the boot camp. We're going to test that boot camp here in just a second. And two sticks of DDR3. So looks like it worked out just fine. Now, if you didn't have a drive sitting around with this already installed and you took out your old drive and put in a new drive I do have some videos that I'll link down below also that shows how to install uh, Mac OS either from a USB drive or from the internet recovery so you can watch that video it steps you step by step right through how to do that and get up to this point now if you want to get all the way to the the, uh, the boot camp dual boot setup then watch that uh, 13 inch 2012 video and that'll step you through that as well so I'm going to power this thing down and we're going to go into the boot options and see if we can get into Windows alright so this time after I hit the power button I'm going to hold down the option key here for a couple seconds wait till I hear the the tone and then I should see a, a startup menu giving me a couple options on boot drives and here we are so I've got one that's called Mac SSD we know what that is so I'm going to select this other one here that says Windows. And we're going to boot into that and just test to make sure that Windows sees all the hardware correctly. So far, so good. Let's take a closer look. All right, so let's go into the Task Manager, go under Performance. And we see our CPU there. There's our 16 gigs of memory at 1600 megahertz. And it sees, I'm not sure why it sees the capacity as, I guess it sees the full capacity of the drive itself for two, two terabytes and then formatted for one terabyte. It only really recognizes that uh, Windows partition, which is exactly what it should see. So this is working great. I've got Windows and Mac all running, and now I've got a bigger screen. So that was a quick little video, just a quick little job here to get my uh, 2012, which is the last year that you can really do these types of upgrades on, um, upgraded from a 13 inch to 15 inch. Uh, it was relatively easy through the RAM in, swap that hard drive in. I'll go ahead and grab another hard drive, um, you know, SSD drive for that 13 inch, and I'll get that one set up at some point. But now I've got a 15 inch and I know there's another thing I can do is take this super drive out and put another disc in there. I really don't need to on this one. I've got a terabyte on each partition 
and I do like to keep a, uh, a CD drive or DVD drive and a couple machines around the house here because I do take like some old DVDs and I convert them into uh, you know digital to put onto our Plex server. If you want to learn how to make a Plex server, I got videos on that also. Um, a lot easier than setting up DVD drives around the house to watch some old DVDs that we like to watch. So that's going to wrap it up for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. If you like it, go ahead and give me that thumbs up. If you want to see more content like this, smash that subscribe button. And thanks as always for watching. Until next time, peace out and geek out.